Is if they made a movie about your career, when it was over, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, this Australian V8 supercar champion that yeah. comes to the States and, and makes it in NASCAR. Yeah, look, it's just been a dream run for me and something that I never thought would actually eventuate. I, I left Australia as champion in the Australian series, of V8 supercar series in 2005. When I made the commitment to go and I announced that I was going to leave the sport in Australia, I had no contacts here in the US, no ride, no nothing, and a brand new baby. So. We basically came over uh, on a whim, and I was lucky enough to uh, have some great friends in Ford Racing who uh, put me in contact with uh, Tad and Jody Koshekta, who own JTG Doherty Racing, and uh, was able to, uh, to get a truck ride. You know, without Tad and Jody Koshekta, I wouldn't be here today, there's no doubt about it. So you jumped out on the limb, and, and it didn't break, thankfully. Yeah. But, but did you well, it think? Nearly, it nearly broke because I crashed like three out of the first four <laughs> races. But, but did yeah. you think when you were running in the truck series back in 2006 that you would make it to this level and be a Sprint Cup winner? No, not at all. And I promised my wife that would give it, you know, five years uh, and just treat it like a holiday. And uh, five years has turned into nine. So it's worked out pretty well for us. And it was really uh, 2008 when I got a couple of cup starts for the Wood Brothers in the 21 car that you know, I started to feel like, man, you know, this is really kind of working for me. Making only his third ever start in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Well, what a great job Marcus Ambrose has done. Shows just how talented this man is on the road course. You talked about Tad and Jody and the foundation they helped you lay for your career. But here we are yeah. at Richard Petty Motorsports, driving for the king. You know, I, I really feel like um, I've been honored to be part of this team and uh, it'll go down as, uh, as one of my proudest things I've done is to, is to know the Petty family, to know Richard personally, and to represent them. What was your knowledge of, of Richard before you came over and, and, yeah. and met him personally as a kid growing up in Australia? I mean, everybody who's into racing uh, knows Richard Petty, knows the name, knows the hat, and I was certainly no stranger to who Richard Petty was. I actually had his picture on my maths book, I think, when I was in about grade six. And to drive for Richard Petty, just an absolute uh, dream for me. It's just been incredible. At Watkins Glen International, Marcus Ambrose is the winner. Woo! Guys, thank you so much. What a dream come true. To be able to, to come here and win at NASCAR's top level, what, what does that mean to you now as, as you go back to Australia? Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, winning is what we come here to do. And so to win in America in the toughest, you know, former motorsport in America has been uh, fantastic. And I remember those days fondly. But I look back probably at my career here of, of just making it, you know, uh, just making it for me from where I came from, from my background. When I turned up in 2006, I'd never raced on an oval. Uh, no dirt, no asphalt, nothing. And so, you know, I was able to learn and adapt really quickly over here and survive. And I think that is what I'm going to take back with me. You know, I'm really proud of, of just making it. You, you have made it, no question about that. But, but are there any regrets as you reflect back on your yeah. time in NASCAR? Yeah, certainly, you know, I would have liked to have won more. And uh, winning on an oval, we've got three races to go, so it might happen, but certainly, uh, you know, that a glaring factor right there is that I wasn't able to win on an oval. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go to my grave, uh, you know, knowing that. But I've been really competitive and I've made the most of my opportunities and that's really all I can ask for. The news became official this morning that Marcus Ambrose will be leaving NASCAR at the end of the 2014 season. Ambrose announced this weekend that he'll return to his native Australia next year. We're certainly going to miss Marcus Ambrose, though. And added a lot of flavor to the series. He did. Great race car driver. All good things must come to an end, as they say. And, and now the decision has been made to leave NASCAR and go home to Australia. How difficult was that decision? Yeah, it was actually surprising because I, I, it was building up. And it wasn't one of those moments where you woke up on Monday morning and said, OK, this is it. You know, we knew that my American you know, racing was going to come to a finite conclusion. It was going to finish at some point, and when it did, we're going to ship the family back to Australia because I'm really a, a big believer in giving my kids, who are now seven and nine, the opportunity to experience both America and Australia so they can make their choices when they grow up of who they want to be and where they want to live. So there was always that moment where, you know, it was going to build up to a point to say, OK, the timing's right. And for me, you know, the, halfway through this year, it was building up. And so by the time I came to the decision, uh, there was no decision to make. It was already made for me because we've been talking about it, thinking about it. And I'm really, really proud of what I've done and I'm satisfied to stop at the end of this year. 
how difficult is that going to be for you and your family to, to leave what has been such a big part of your life? Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm on my new racing career, which is going to be uh, back in Vets of a car with, uh, with Team Penske and Dick Johnson Racing. But I've got to tell you, the decision that I made was absolutely independent of that. It was, my, you know, I, we were going home before any deal was put in place to race in Australia. And then all of a sudden, you know, up pops this this uh, great opportunity to, uh, to race back in the V8 Supercar Series. And uh, I feel like I've got a lot more to give on the racetrack and I just can't wait to get that started. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. And, you, and you're not gonna wait to get it started. Er, early yeah. December, you're gonna go back and, and race. And you mentioned the fact you're driving for Roger Penske. You drove for Richard Petty, now driving for, for the captain. That's gotta be pretty special to have both those guys on your resume. It really is, and it's actually a little tricky right now because you know I'm racing uh, the last few NASCAR races and I wanna be very respectful of the two and the 22 for them trying to win their championship. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm up there. You don't wanna no, get off on the, on the wrong foot, I got right? a lot of eyes watching me, right? So I gotta be quite, uh, quite mindful of that. But uh, yeah, Roger Penske is an incredible man and he's built an incredible racing organization around him. We're gonna do a race at Sydney, the last race of the year. We're gonna test two or three times before that. So I'm actually gearing up for a brand new season uh, the very next day after the NASCAR career ends. Our production group was standing here this morning in anticipation of the interview before you came over and, and we all agreed. We're gonna miss having you around in NASCAR. You're, you're a unique personality, and we appreciate everything you've done, and we wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you, but the sport moves on, right? That's what I've learned too. You'll miss me for maybe five minutes, and then there'll be someone new to talk about. I'll be cheering on Eric, my teammate, and Sam Hornish, a great add to RPM, and I'll be cheering them on and uh, watching from home 14 hours in front. So I'll be watching the Sprint Cup race on Monday morning at 3 a.m., and uh, sit on the couch and uh, have a cup of coffee and watch the action.